There are endless challenges to building in the crypto space, but none greater than operating an exchange in the United States of America under the current regulatory regime. I talked to Bobby Zagoda, the CEO of Bitstamp US, about how they operate without much regulatory clarity and how they compete with the other bigger names in the crypto space in the United States. That's dope. Bitstamp US. Yeah. The US is a challenging part, I would imagine, for a crypto exchange. There's a lot going on from a regulatory and legislative perspective. How are you navigating that? Yeah, well, it's it's always a, a challenge. And, uh, and I think of it as a journey. You know, on the one hand, the US marketplace is so vibrant in crypto and in innovation in general. And it's, it continues, even, even given these market conditions, it continues to grow. We've got you know, a few thousand people signing up every week. They want to invest, they want to learn. Um, but from a regulatory standpoint, I am concerned. You know, um, you know, the US has this just unbelievable position in the world from a financial perspective. The US dollar and, and we have always, including the US government, have been innovators in on the world stage. But today I fear that we're falling behind, you know? So when I see what's going on in Europe, for instance, Bitstamp, of course, you know, very global business, I feel like the European Union is making more definitive steps forward to level the playing field and clarify the rules. When I look at the US, we still have agencies that are jockeying for position and there doesn't seem to be any material movement in terms of clarity. There are a few bright spots, you know, a couple of the bills, you know, on uh, Capitol Hill are really encouraging. The Lummis Gillibrand. Lummis Gillibrand bill in particular, I think is really well thought out and thoughtful and is advancing the conversation. But I don't know what kind of timeline that's on. You Years know? and it'll Years, be right? chopped and maybe never even discussed exactly. again. Exactly. Or watered down to a point where it doesn't matter. If you've been following me for the last few months, then you definitely know that I've been trading and investing on BitGet. Now listen, it took me six months to decide that they were going to be the sponsor for the newsletter. But once I saw their partnership with Juventus, that they were the world's leading copy trading platform in crypto, and also that they're a top five exchange by volume, well, I was sold and I was convinced. And I've been using it ever since to dollar cost average and to invest in Bitcoin. You can also trade there with leverage, but of course, be careful if you're gonna do that. And I don't know if you saw the recent news, but they've also done a deal with Lionel Messi. Big game. A perfect thing. Now, you can get up to an $8,000 bonus using my link below, and you can trade spot with absolutely no fees. You also get a 15% discount on trading leverage. Go ahead and sign up right now using the wolfofallstreets.info slash bitget. Claim that huge reward and use the world's best trading platform. You know, I thought the executive order from, from the Biden administration was positive some months ago, um, but there doesn't seem to be doing, you know, the agencies don't seem to be doing the work that he asked for. So, um, and then the SEC, as you well know, is just, um, I just don't understand the mindset in terms of um, if they are true to their word about wanting to bring consumer protection and clarity and trust and confidence, you know, just tell us the rules. You know, we, we at Bitstamp and, and many of our competitors just want to do the right thing but it's, it's a bit of a challenge to figure out what that is. Would you rather have negative clarity than no clarity? Well, we, um, you know, at this point, I'm open to it, but, you know, uh, we're hoping for common sense frameworks where, you know, consumers can get protection, institutions can operate with certainty you know they can invest in the space because they know that there's a, you know a foundation there um, I do worry about the the regulation going too far and in that scenario it's not like Bitstamp goes out of business it just means that the US has lost a great opportunity on the world stage because that innovation is going to continue. It's just going to continue in other jurisdictions. Bitstamp doesn't go out of business, but you run the risk seemingly with the way that regulators have spoken and behaved of finding out that you were non-compliant retrospectively on offering something 
that at the time was not deemed a security, that could become a security in the future? How do you operate at all, not knowing? It's so difficult. You know, we have a we have a great process, a very rigorous process. You know, Bitstamp has always been a compliance forward kind of kind of exchange. Anything to foster adoption and regulation is part of that. So we've always had this good process, but today, given the uncertainty and some of the rhetoric, you know, we're retracing our steps. We're just making sure that we have a defensible, logical, insightful position backed up by experts so that, you know, when and if, you know, some unforeseen decree or, or precedent gets set, we can say, look, we behave rationally and now we'll change, you know, based on this new information. But I don't really anticipate that. I, I feel like the conversation is more about agency jurisdiction than anything else. I was just gonna say, I think the statements that we see that everybody obviously is fearful of, Gensler hinting that proof of stake could make Ethereum yeah. a security, is really just jockeying for, jockeying for power. Yeah. He, he's saying to the CFTC, we want to regulate Ethereum. Yeah. You can have maybe Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, again, I guess I, I guess I understand where they're coming from. But if you really understand what staking is, and if you really understand how decentralized protocols work, you know, there has to be a means to secure the network. And given the decentralized nature, there has to be an incentive. It has to be an incentive for for independent operators to participate. And that's good for everybody. But that is not a security. That's not how securities work. There are also people who, follow my logic here, Gensler, buy Ethereum to pay for transactions and don't in any way expect to earn anything. Exactly. Literally, I, I need to do a transaction on the network. I'm going to buy $100 worth and I'm going to use it right. until that $100 is yeah. gone. That's utility. That's exactly In no right. way is that in violation of the Howey test in any way, shape, or form. So it really seems like they've just taken anything that has a yield or any potential yield and they say that makes it a security. Yeah. It's like they're cherry picking one little part of the test to make it an investment contract. Well, and I think they're trying to preserve their own optionality for what they might want to regulate, but they, don't under, they may not understand the cost. So the cost of what they're doing makes it hard for companies like ours and others to invest. You, know, you don't know where to invest and how much to invest in this jurisdiction because you just don't know what's going to happen. So again, from a, from a USA perspective, you know, it's hurtful. We're, we're going to push the investment offshore or to other jurisdictions. You hinted at the fact that you're still onboarding new customers at a pretty tremendous rate. Yeah. Even in the depths of this uh, bear market with all this regulatory uncertainty and global markets in general melting down, that has to be a positive signal. Yeah, it, you know, honestly, I look at these stats every week and it, 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 helps, it helps me relax a little bit. Now, obviously, our numbers are nothing compared to what they were last year. I mean, it's, it's like night and day. However, there are people signing up each and every day in the U.S. and globally. And we've just launched a Learn Center. We've done some pretty interesting studies on the barriers for people to participate or to access these markets. And uh, we did a big survey, the Crypto Pulse survey, um, which we should chat about. Really interesting findings. But one of the findings was that there are a couple of major barriers, the first one being education. So 44% of US respondents, and this were, there were 30,000 people surveyed, institutions and individuals, they said they just don't know where to start. You know, and they don't know who to partner with. They don't know what it means. They know it. It's captured the imagination of a lot of people. So we put together a, a, a what I think, of course, I'm biased, a really, really well curated learn center where people can come and access information in bite-sized chunks that can meet them where they're where they are on their journey. So there's some, you know, 101 level information for people who are curious. But there's also a lot of trend information for, for people who are established in the market they just want to keep up with stuff. Um, so anyway, that's a big one. The second one is regulation. <clears throat> a lot of people are saying 27%. You know what? They're going to stay on the sidelines until the rules are clearer. 
so that they can, you know. And I would assume that's more of an institutional opinion than a retail opinion. It is, yeah. it is, but it's both. Yeah. It's definitely both. You're right on the institutional yeah. side, predominant. Um, so we're trying to address both of those things with education and information. So even a lot of people think it's the Wild West. I feel like I'm the most regulated guy in the country. Like, yeah. I got you, you 40 have to comply to actual regulations and theoretical regulations that you think might happen. Exactly. It's much harder. I got to deal with each of the 50 states and jurisdictions. I got money transmitter licenses all over the place. So, so you know, just educating retail users about, hey, this is not the Wild West. We are operating within regimes. There are some open questions that need to be answered, but you know, we we. Bitstamp and and a lot of the, the more compliance forward players are just trying to do the right thing. It must be challenging to have so much competition even in the United States, right? You have sort of, I guess, the big names. Bitstamp's a huge name, certainly in Europe, but yeah. finance, how do you compete for market share? We're doing a number of things. One of them is um, we've changed our, our pricing. We've implemented a new pricing strategy globally. And it has a couple of features that, again, designed to remove barriers for people who want to get involved. The most notable of which is a zero fee tier. So I never, ever thought I would say this, but if you, uh, you know, across all pairs, all tokens, all pairs, up to $1,000 traded in a 30-day period, it's absolutely free for, for all retail investors. And um, we're doing that to just, like, make it more of a no-brainer. It's a marketing tool. Yeah, it's a marketing tool. And to, you know, hopefully create some trust that, you know, we're, we're, we're a partner for the long haul. We're not trying to make a buck off of one trade. Right. Is that sustainable? Or is the idea that they eventually become someone who's trading 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, the and they're idea. a customer for life? That's the idea. And they're not going to go somewhere else. Exactly. We, you know, obviously we modeled this every way from Sunday. And, you know, our client base is very loyal. It's very large. And people grow with us as they get more educated, more sophisticated, and are become more aware of the opportunities, you know, they grow with us. Do you feel that in this industry, people sort of choose the platform they're comfortable with and they stick with them through thick and thin? You I, know, think, I, I think that is the case, that anecdotally, but. I definitely think that's where we've been. I'm curious about the next few years, right? I think the character of, of, of the participants in the next couple of years is gonna be a little bit different, you know? I think they're going to be, in gen I'm generalizing, you know, hugely here, but I think they're going to be a little bit less tech savvy, a little bit less crypto savvy. Normal they're gonna, people. They're gonna, it's they, fine. They, they've got more choices, yeah. right? So we're trying to um, make sure that we're ready. We're not like stuck in the past. We're actually ready for serving these this next waves of adoption. So for instance, on Bitstamp, you can get to a person. You know, 22 seconds on average, wow. you can talk to a person because why? We think this next wave of adoption is a bigger decision for them. And because you can't at Coinbase. And because you can't at the more kind of Silicon Valley modeled companies, you know, they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so I think that's amazing because I think that customer service is a huge point of failure in the crypto industry. And a lot of that has to do with just when we were scaling in a bull market, you couldn't yeah. hire enough customer service people if your life depended on it. That's so that's true. fair. But sort of when I asked you the question, if you think people stick with the platform that they do, I was thinking in my mind of Coinbase, right? I don't use it. I believe they're a very impactful, important company and probably will be for a long time. But they have downtime when, it, when you need them. Yep. But also, their fees are very high. Yep. But I don't think your average person ever checks the fee. I think they just, it's easy. They go yeah. and they use it. Their new fee structure, a round trip on a trade can cost you 1%. Yes. That's yes. an absurd. If you're active, that is an absurd management fee, effectively. You wouldn't buy an index fund with a 1%, yeah. you know, if you had something competitive. So you're offering something, but how do you get people to care or even notice? Yeah, again, I, th you know. And sorry to talk about Coinbase, and, uh, but, but that's my opinion. I, I really like the company, but I just don't think people know. I can't comment on Coinbase and what, exactly what they're thinking, but I do think, you know, the last three years of adoption cycles are, are very different from the next three years. And the last three years, retail investors by and large were price insensitive. They yeah. just wanted to get into the market, right? But the next three years, there's more choice, there's more kind of, um, you know, 
fast follower kind of character people who are going to evaluate who's the best partner for me. So that's, you know, I think I think that's that's in part why we did this zero fee suit yeah. versus what Coinbase. Did. I mean, no fees. You don't have to look far uh, to see that that's been the trend. That's been the trend on legacy yeah, platforms, equities, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why retail loves Robinhood, E-Trade, I believe. I mean, basically every major platform eventually to compete had to go to no fee. Of course, that leaves the question mark of how they're making their money and yeah. what part of you they're monetizing to do so. Yeah. But that's not the same for you. You're counting yeah. on them to be a long-term customer who eventually is outside of that yeah. bottom tier. Yeah, we got, we got a very different philosophy, obviously, than the Robin Hoods of the world. And uh, I don't think a, a, an equities like zero fee regime, I think there's more negatives and downsides yeah. you become to the, the product. ecosystem <laughs> than, than, than there are upsides. Well, I've, I think Robin Hood, that's been, uh, has, has played out pretty clearly. And I wonder if they're, those platforms are also going to continue to bump their heads against the regulatory wall. I, I, I got to believe they will. Um, you know, what I think they, I don't know, intentionally or, or, or not, but they feed this speculation. Oh, the meme of, stocks and... Yeah, the, sure. you know, this kind of, and, and that unfortunately bleeds over to crypto, but obviously that's not where crypto starts and that's not where we're focused. But, but this kind of speculation madness, I think, is not good for society or the economy or... But it's good for exchanges. Economy. Well, it right? can more be. more volume. <laughs> it can be. It and the, can the be, problem but is they get washed out and they never come exact, back. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's like this kind of craziness and, and there's nothing under underlying the asset, what I get excited about is there's so many assets out there, people don't even know what the use case is. There's really fascinating, interesting use cases around, you know, transacting around, you know, it, you know, AWS like file management yeah. services and things like that. So you're obviously taking a major focus on education. Yep. How long do you think it takes to even educate one, two, five percent of the general public? Yeah, you know, I don't know. All, all I want to do is make sure that number one, the the known barriers that we're addressing. In, in, to the best of our ability. Yeah, we the, the existing it obstacles the world. you have to yeah. knock out. And then secondly, you know, I know at some point we're going to get some market cooperation, some market movement when there's a little bit more clarity on the macroeconomic side. And I want to be ready. I want, when there's more and more people saying, hey, I want to learn about crypto. I want to partner with an exchange. I just want to be there, be visible and have great resources for them. And do you think that that has remained that those sort of the whales and the original OGs still look to Bitstamp as the standard? Yeah, I think so. Now, we've got a lot of wood to chop in the U.S., so it, it, it's, uh, it's more, more readily apparent in Europe. But in the U.S., we've got a, a, a strong and growing client base, particularly on the institutional side. But we've got to get the brand, we've got to get the brand up. Well, I'm confident that you'll get a big axe and you'll chop all that wood. Thank you so much. Thank Always you, a pleasure to talk to you. Wow, I missed you on the, yeah. on the first shot, but we got there. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Scott.